everybody, let's jump right in on how I make my fluid acrylic paints for my fluid acrylic pores. Um, I have found by watching YouTube videos that I do mine a little bit differently than other people. Um, some artists online mix with mediums, like a pouring medium. Some use water. And I've only been able to find one other artist who is as process driven as I am. And uh, I'll put a link in the dibbly doo to his videos. He's actually the one that talked about viscosity and explained why viscosity is so important. And it really spoke to me. Um, especially after the first few that I did where I wasn't getting the results I want. So this process that I'm going to show you is really about viscosity. It's to ensure that each bottle of paint that I make has the same thickness so that when I pour them, they will move each other, push against each other, instead of the thinner one combining and mixing with the thicker one because then you get color merge and I don't want that. I want the colors to move. So I'm going to show you how to make the paint. I'm going to show you how to measure the viscosity and you can do it with some simple stuff. You need some boiled cooled water. So it needs to come to a boiling and then be cooled to room temperature. And that is so that once you add the water and paint to your bottle, or container that if there's no bacteria in it that will start to grow and create that really awful funky smell. I, I tend to use my, make my paints and then I will use them until it's empty and then I'll refill it. So I'm constantly using the same bottle. I don't want any bacteria in my paints. Um, you're going to need a selection of paints. You do not need Liquitex Basics. Those are my go-to ones um, for a few reasons. One, they have 48 colors, so I don't have to do color mixing if I don't want to. They are reasonably affordable because I go through a lot of paint when I make my big pours. And they have good consistency from one color to another. I've come up with a recipe now for my Liquitex Basics. So I know that it doesn't matter if I mix the yellow paint or the black paint with the same recipe, I'll always get the same results. Not all paint manufacturers are like that. Some of them I have found um, the paints that have the real minerals in them will be thicker than the ones that have the artificial ones. So the Liquitex Basics kind of covers all of my important things. It's easy to find, lots of colors, relatively affordable, good consistency. So I'm happy with that. You'll either need a container with a lid or bottles. Some people will mix it in uh, a container per project, like they'll only mix the paints that they want to use for that project and then they pour them and then they clean out the container and that's done. A lot of them use little plastic cups where they'll mix the paints, pour, that's it. But because I do a lot of pouring, I have bottles for mine. But you don't have to do that. You can just use some old Tupperware or Ziploc containers that you have at home and you're perfectly fine. You're going to need a funnel. This is for measuring consistency, the viscosity of the paint. This particular funnel is a third of a cup or about three ounces or 75 milliliters. But you can use any size you want. Kitchen scale. One of the best ways of making sure that you have the same viscosity is to weigh the paint and weigh the water. So all of my stuff is weighed. And then on my phone, I have the stopwatch feature because we're going to time how long it takes the paint to go through the funnel so that we can measure the viscosity. So I'm going to show you how to mix the paint 
test the paint for viscosity in this container. And once I got a consistency that I really liked, because I weighed out my ingredients, I didn't have to test for viscosity every single time because Liquitex paint is consistent from one batch to another. So once you do the test for whichever ones you want to do, then you're good. Now every time you change paint or change recipe, you have to do a test. We're going to make the yellow paint, test the yellow paint, and then put the yellow paint into the tube. Now, when I have my recipe, which I already have, and actually for the Liquitex Basics, my recipe is 50-50. So it's 50% water and 50% paint. And that's what we're gonna make today. So when I do it now, I just do it in the jar. Instead of doing this, I'll actually put the bottle on it, weigh the paint, weigh the water, shake it up, and it's good to go. But for today, we're going to do it the original way that I did it. So, you need a kitchen scale. It doesn't matter how it weighs, if it weighs in grams, if it weighs in ounces, it doesn't matter because what you want is to just consistently weigh something. Most kitchen scales come with um, a zero or a Z slash T. So that means once you put your bowl or your container on top, this weighs 38 grams, you press the Z and it brings it back to zero so that the weight of the um, container is not taken into the recipe. Okay, container on, zero, take the paint. I don't even bother with the cap. So this particular mechanism I got from a salon supply store and it's used to squeeze all the dye out of the hair dye um, container tubes. So here we go. Make sure it's all out. And that way I'm, again, wasting as little paint as possible. And there's usually about 125 grams in each one. See? Look at that. All gone. Put the cap on. Goes into my recycling bin. There we go. So this is 125 grams of paint. I'm going to put in 125 grams of boiled water. If you're good at addition and you know that the total needs to be 250, great. If you're not good at addition, write down the number 125, press zero and put in 125, whichever you're more comfortable with. Twenty-five, right on the nose. Perfect. Then take a tight-fitting lid. Now, I shake this. Everybody who I've ever come across who does this kind of fluid acrylic pour, whether they use mediums or water to thin or thicken the paint, talks about how you shouldn't shake it because it puts bubbles in paint. And it does put bubbles in the paint. But I am lazy. <laughs> so. The link down below to the guy in Australia at Fluid Painting, he has uh, the same kind of setup where he weighs the paint, he weighs the water, and then he has a special attachment to a drill which mixes the paint without putting any bubbles in it. And I couldn't find anything close to that. And to be honest with you, it was more of a pain in the butt than anything because I had to wash it in between. Uh. So yes, I shake it, but then my paint sits in the container and will degas and debubblefy. But in my paintings, we'll also see that I use a heat gun. 
So after I do the pour, I turn the heat gun on and it pops all the bubbles on the top. So for me, that is the best of both worlds. This is fast, this is easy, and it doesn't really interfere with my final product because I have mechanisms in which I can degasify or debubbleify the paint, letting it sit and using the heat gun. Okay, so now we have a batch of fluid acrylic paint. This is where we get into the viscosity testing. And again, you only have to do it the first time for every brand. Now, when I first did it, I tested all my Liquitex basic paints, and I tested my Grumbacker paints, and I tested my Amsterdam paints, and I, I tested every single one um, because I wanted to make sure that the viscosity was equal in all of them. Again, one of the reasons why I chose to stick mostly with Liquitex Basics and Amsterdam is because they're consistent across the board and they're actually consistent with each other. I do a 50-50 mix with my Amsterdam as well. But you might not like the 50-50. My mix is actually considerably thicker than what the guy in Australia uses. He has a much more fluid, he has more water in his, or the paint that he is using is thinner than the basics. So you could create a 50-50 mix and say, I don't like it, it's too thin or it's too thick. So then you have to keep adding or subtracting water until you get the consistency that you like test the viscosity of that and then that would be the viscosity that you would work towards with all of the other paints that you create. My viscosity is 4.5 seconds for this funnel. You might have a bigger funnel, you might have a smaller funnel. You, It all depends, right? That's why I'm kind of giving you the recipe and the techniques and then you can use it depending on your circumstances what fluidity you actually like to work with and what size of tools that you have. So here's where it gets messy, but it's only messy while you're testing. The objective is, is to fill this with paint and hold the bottom. So usually what I do is I hold it kind of with my hand like this so I have a good grip and then I block it with my pinky. So I've got a good grip, I have good control over the paint. <clears throat> and then what we're going to do is we're going to fill this with paint and at the same time I'm going to start my stopwatch and release the paint. And then I'm going to watch as the paint drains. And as soon as the paint finishes draining, I'm going to press stop. And then that will give you your viscosity. So when you're mixing other paints, testing other paints, you're going to want to get as close to that as possible. Now, does every single paint that I test equal 4.5 seconds? No. Some will be closer to 4.1 and some will be closer to 4.9, but I have found that that amount of discrepancy does not affect the paints. So you don't have to worry about it being exact. Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense. Of course, if you have any questions or if you want more clarification, please feel free to uh, put your questions down in the dibbly doo So I'm going to fill my funnel right to the top. It's going to make a little bit of a mess, but that's okay. All right. One, two, three, go. There we go. Now, I don't have to wait for the last final drips to come out. I just have to wait for the f for the full stream to break because there's still stuff coming out, but that doesn't count. And it came out to 4.78, which is well within my parameters and makes me very happy. 
whew, that worked on camera. That's really good that it worked on camera. Now, I'm going to pour this into my container. Okay, so as you can see, that almost filled it up halfway. So, since we're here, I don't want you to be afraid of the testing. It's not, it's not difficult, it's not hard. If you pick one paint, you're good to go. If you have a ton of different paints, you just have to play with them a little bit. But what I'm gonna do is just show you how I normally do it. put on my lid nice and tight no muss no fuss so that's it that's how I make my fluid acrylic paint I hope that you enjoyed this video and are maybe curious enough to want to give it a try any questions or concerns please put them down in the dibbly do I'll also put uh, the link for Artful Magazine and for Deb Packwood's channel and all of my social media contacts. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe right here so you can follow me on my Artful journey. Please stick around for the second video where I'm going to use this paint and I'll use these two colors of paint and show you a step-by-step -step tutorial on how to actually do the pour. It's always better when you're here. Bye!